हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट न्यूटन्स सेकेंड लॉ ऑफ मोशन बट बिफोर आई कम टू द मेन टॉपिक आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस सम इम्पॉर्टेंट टर्म्स विद यू दैट आर रिलेटेड टू दिस पर्टिक्युलर टॉपिक सो द फर्स्ट टर्म दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट इज मोमेंटम वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द टर्म मोमेंटम मोमेंटम इज एक्चुअली the product of it is the product of mass and velocity so whenever we multiply mass with velocity we get the momentum the symbol for momentum is small p it is denoted by the letter small p and mathematically it can be represented as p is equal to m into v now to understand this in a better way suppose we have a car and a truck both moving with the same speed now car has a smaller mass as compared to the truck a truck is quite huge its mass is many times the mass of a car and if both of them are moving with the same velocity obviously the product of the mass of car into its velocity will be less than the product of mass of truck and its velocity so that means the momentum of the truck will be more than the momentum of a car so suppose this car and the truck moving with the same velocity they hit a common target which will cause more damage obviously the truck because its momentum is more so that means momentum is somewhat a measure of force so if the momentum is more the force is more if the momentum is less the force will also be less so another very common example if you want to talk about a simple example suppose you have a uh, two stones having the same mass you can say we have two bricks we take two bricks of equal size and we just drop one of them at a level from slightly above the ground and the other brick we made to uh, make it to fall from the roof of a building which will cause more damage obviously the brick which will fall from a greater height it is because because it is falling from a greater height the acceleration is more and the velocity of that brick will be more so if the mass is same and velocity is more then also the object which is moving with a higher velocity will have a greater momentum again momentum is a measure of force so we are going to use this to mathematically derive newton's second law of motion so if you want to speak mathematically newton's second law is the uh, it says that force is directly proportional force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum this is the mathematical statement of newton's second law force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum suppose we have an object whose mass is m and it's moving with an initial velocity of what is the symbol of initial velocity it is u and with time the velocity changes to that is the final velocity of that object becomes v and this change takes place in time t so these are the few initial quantities that we are going to use for calculating the change of momentum or for calculating the force mass is m initial velocity of the object is u the final velocity is v and time is t from this we can calculate that if the initial momentum just now i have told you what is momentum it is the product of mass and velocity so since we are talking about initial momentum 
it will be mass into the initial velocity it will be m u we can denote initial momentum by the symbol p1 similarly final momentum that is p2 will be this is the final momentum this will be m into the final velocity that is m v now coming to the definition force is directly proportional to the rate of change that means force is directly proportional to the change in momentum that is final momentum minus initial momentum upon time because it is the rate of change whenever we say rate of change we have to divide it by the time because rate of change means change taking place in a unit time so if we substitute the values what do we get force proportional to m uh, p2 is v minus m u upon t i am continuing over here we can take m common so this comes to f proportional to m into v minus u upon t and we have already started that v minus u upon t what is it this is acceleration so that means f is proportional to m into a now if we want to remove the constant of proportionality uh, uh, sorry if we want to remove this proportionality sign we have to add a constant over here and the constant that we are going to use is k into m into a now if we are talking about a unit force if the force is 1 unit that is 1 newton and the mass of the object is 1 kg and the acceleration is 1 meter per second square then the value of k will be 1 so for a unit force the value of k is 1 therefore force is equal to mass into acceleration this is the mathematical formulation of newton's second law of motion i just explain this once again the statement of the second law is force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum momentum is the product of mass and velocity if the mass of an object is m its initial velocity is u its final velocity is v and this change is taking place in time t then the initial momentum will be mass into the initial velocity that is mu and the final momentum will be mass into the final velocity that is mv now according to the statement force is directly proportional to the change in momentum upon time or the rate of change of momentum that means the change taking place in a unit time we will substitute the values we take out m common we know that v minus u upon t is acceleration so we substitute that value with a and we put a constant to remove the sign of proportionality over here for a unit force that means if the force is 1 newton the mass of the object is 1 kg the acceleration is 1 meter per second square the value of k will be equal to 1 so we get the formula f is equal to m into a which is the mathematical expression of newton's second law of motion i hope you have understood this now coming to the practical applications of newton's second law based on which you can be asked a conceptual question in the exam uh whenever we are traveling by car we are advised to wear seat belts why do we wear a seat belt actually what is the role of a seat belt or how does it help us suppose sudden brakes are applied we tend to fall forward which we have already studied in newton's first law of motion so that time the role of the seat belt comes into play if the seat belt was not there on sudden application of brakes it was quite possible that we hit the dashboard in front of us and we may get injured so the seat belt it increases the time because once we are wearing the seat belt 
we will go forward but we will go slowly so if we increase this time the change in momentum will take place but in a greater period of time so the force will be less because force is inversely proportional to the time in which the change is being effected so if the time increases the force will decrease so even though we may hit the dashboard but we will not get a severe injury which otherwise probably would we, uh, we would have got similarly high jumpers they jump on sand pits they never jump on concrete floors this is again because of the same reason can you guess why yes sand is compressible if they are jumping on a soft surface while landing the time increases and as the time increases the impact of the force will decrease because the change in momentum is the same but the time that is uh, required for that change in momentum is increased by increasing the time and so the impact of the force it becomes less so uh, these are two very common examples which we see around us just imagine yourself jumping on a concrete floor from a great height what would happen you will get injured very badly this is because when you hit a hard surface the time is very less for the change in momentum it happens very quickly and lesser the time greater will be the impact of force so a large amount of force acts on your body and you may even fracture yourself that way so cricket players there are many people who are cricket lovers who are watching this video so those who play cricket they know that while taking a catch the hand is moved backwards why don't we take a catch like this because if we just take a catch without moving our hands backward the ball will suddenly hit our hands and the momentum will be reduced to zero in a fraction of a second so the impact of force in our hand on our hand would be so strong that probably our wrist could get fractured so that is why while taking a catch always the hands are moved backwards so that the time gets increased and the impact of the force is reduced to the maximum so that the player does not injure himself so this is about newton's second law keep watching for newton's third law in the next video